A very warm welcome to you, and thank you so much for joining us at Victory International Church. Thank you, Kathy, for leading us in worship, and thank you, Joe, for leading us in prayer. I just want to encourage you to continue praying for Pastor Omar and his family. My name is Pastor Paul, and I'm happy to bring God's Word to us today. I'm reading from 2 Kings chapter 13. Join me if you would, please. 2 Kings 13, verses 14 to 21. And Elisha had become sick with the illness of which he would die. Then Joash the king of Israel came down to him and wept over his face. And he said, Oh, my father, my father, the chariots of Israel and their horsemen. And Elisha said to him, Take a bow and some arrows. So he took himself a bow and some arrows. Then he said to the king of Israel, put your hand on the bow. So he put his hand on it, and Elisha put his hands on the king's hands. And he said, open the east window. And he opened it. Then Elisha said, shoot. And he shot. And he said, the arrow of the Lord's deliverance and the arrow of deliverance from Syria. For you must strike the Syrians at Aphek till you have destroyed them. And he said to the king of Israel, strike the ground. So he struck three times and stopped. And the man of God was angry with him and said, you should have struck five or six times. Then you would have struck Syria till you had destroyed it. But now... You will strike Syria only three times. Then Elisha died and they buried him and the raiding bands from Moab invaded the land in the spring of the year. So it was as they were burying a man that suddenly they spied a band of raiders and they put the man in the tomb of Elisha. And when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood on his feet. Wow. What an amazing portion of scripture. Shall we pray before we get into the word? Father, we thank you for this passage and for your word that's fresh from your throne of grace. Let it speak to every heart. Let it minister to every life. Every person that's watching this stream, let it minister to their needs. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. If I had a title for today's message, it would be Victory Over the Enemy. Victory Over the Enemy. Last week I shared a message entitled Victory Over the Enemy. What It was Moses with his hands lifted up. But today, this is an amazing passage again from the Old Testament. And it's about Elisha in his final moments of his life. And you know, when King Joash heard about it, he was grieved, of course. You know that the man of God was going to be leaving. There would be a gap, there would be a vacuum in his life. And he says to him, my father, my father, the chariots that took Elijah are coming for you. And Elisha doesn't feel sorry for himself But Elisha begins to give King Joash one final lesson in life. It's his swan song, if you like. And it revolves around having victory over the enemy. Now, you know, before someone passes away, what they say is kind of important. And So Elisha's life lesson is still important for us today. And it's meant for you and I to enter into the total victory that Jesus has won for us on the cross. Today, I'd like to share with us three important keys in order to experience victory over the enemy. And the first is this, I will call it a faith position. 
a faith position. Now, Eli Elisha told the king, get a bow and some arrows. And this is what I'm going to do. Just give me a moment. Get a bow and some arrows. So I got me a bow and I've got me some arrows. Then Elisha gave King Joash some further instructions. He said, now take one arrow and I'm just going to take the orange one and Elisha puts his hand on the king's hand in order to guide him. So, I feel the guidance behind me. And he, he says, open the east window. So it's not just pointing at you, because what's in front of me would be south, what's behind me would be north, what's on my left and on your right would be east. So open the east window, and the east window is open. And by the way, the east window is the window where the sun rises. And this scripture comes to my mind. In Malachi chapter 4, it says, For you who fear my name, the sun of righteousness will, will shine with healing in his wings. And, you know, so the east window is open. It's the land, I mean, it's the, it's the direction in which the sun rises. So it's kind of telling us to look to Jesus, right? The risen Son of God, right? And, and then Elisha tells the king to begin to shoot. How many arrows? Just one. So here goes. Wow, what a great shot. Just one shot. One arrow. One transaction. That was sufficient because Elisha said, he said this, this is the Lord's arrow. An arrow of victory over your enemy. For you will completely conquer the enemy at Aphek. So, no other arrows were shot, only one arrow, one shot, and the battle's over. How could that be? I would put it to you today that Jesus is the Lord's arrow, totally sufficient to bring about complete victory over the enemy. Listen to what Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 12 says. But this man, I had three, four blue arrows with me and one orange arrow. That orange arrow was different from all the other arrows. And my Bible says in Hebrews 10 and verse 12, this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God. Jesus sat down at the right hand of God because total victory was won through that one sufficient sacrifice offered for sins forever. One, just one. Total, sufficient sacrifice. It was sufficient because Jesus had no sin. We are all sinners. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But that one sacrifice, perfect sacrifice, that sinless sacrifice of Jesus was sufficient to make covering for all our sins. This is great news. 
Because today, if you would put your trust in Jesus alone, not in your good works, because they, they won't be good enough, right? Because we're all sinners. In that, if you put your trust in Jesus Christ alone for your sins, you can be saved. You, your sins can be forgiven. You're, there is no sin that's too big, too difficult for God to forgive because that one sacrifice was totally sufficient. But, you know, not only that, right? Victory over sin through trusting in Jesus. My Bible says, as many as receive Him, He gave them the right to become children of God to those who believe in His name. Before this service is over, you would have the opportunity, if you do not yet know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, to give your life to Jesus, to put your trust in Him so that you can have a relationship with a God who loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life. But you know what? It's not just victory over sin. You can have victory over many other areas in life over condemnation, over guilt, over weaknesses, over habits, over sickness, over fears, over lack, over accusations, over death and separation. You know, the list is, is quite amazing. Over every, every anxiety, every worry, every fear, every guilt, you can overcome all these things and be victorious as you put your trust in Jesus. Listen to the scriptures in 1 John chapter 5. It says in verse 3, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is he who overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Romans chapter 8 verse 37, Yes, in all these things, yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. God loved you so much that He gave His one and only Son to die in place, your place, for your sin, my sin, and the sins of the world. That today, if you would put your trust in Him, you would not just be a conqueror, you would be more than a conqueror. My Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 57, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, the final enemy is death and Jesus conquered death on your behalf and on my behalf. It says in verse 58 of 1 Corinthians 15, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. My mom, she's 88 this year, but last year when she was 87, she had a heart attack on the 4th of March. And well, we thank God the cardiologist did a successful angioplasty on the 5th of March and inserted stents in two different places. And she was discharged on the 8th of March, and we thank God for that. But nine days later, she got readmitted on the 17th of March. She was bleeding, and I brought her right to the A&E, and immediately the doctor gave her a pint of blood. Uh, but her vital signs were deteriorating, and so she was put into the high-dependency ward. There was blood in her urine, her hemoglobin level was low. She didn't have any appetite. So that night on the 17th of March, I prayed for her that night. And thank God she managed to sleep. At 3.30 in the morning on the 18th of March, this is what she told me. Someone touched my toe and said, fear not, I am with you always. When she opened her eyes, there was no one there. 
Mom knew from the words spoken that it was the Lord Himself. And with that, she was assured and went back to sleep. The next morning, she gave me a call. And she said, guess what? I said, what? She relayed the whole incident to me. And shortly after that, right, there was no more blood in her urine. She didn't need to see the urologist. Her hemoglobin level was back to normal. There wasn't a need for a blood transfusion. Her appetite returned. And on that morning, on the 18th of March, they made arrangements for her to be sent to the normal ward. And she was at the evening, and within four days later, she was discharged on the 22nd of March, and she has been well ever since. Glory be to Jesus. I, I want you to know that Jesus is alive, and He can touch you right where you are. As you are listening to this stream, He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Put your trust in Him. That one perfect sacrifice on the cross of Calvary, not just for your sins, but for your sickness, not just for your sickness and sins, but also for all your fears, your anxieties, your addictions. God is going to give you victory over them. This is your faith position. But the second key to having victory over the enemy is faith persistence. Faith persistence. It says in 2 Kings chapter 13, verse 17, Elisha said to King Joash, you must strike the Syrians at Aphek till you have destroyed them. Strike till you have destroyed them. Not strike till you injure them, but strike till they are destroyed totally. Let, let me put it this way in today's context. Let me encourage you to pray until something happens. Pray until something happens. I like the acrostic push. You know, it's like a mother giving birth, right? She pushes and pushes and pushes until the baby comes out, right? And the acrostic push reminds us to pray until something happens. Have a faith persistency. So let me ask you a question as you're viewing this on your devices this morning or this afternoon. Did King Joash do as was expected of him? You can key in on the chat, yes, or you can key in, no. Well, for the answer, join me in 2 Kings 13 as I read verses 18 to 19. Elijah said to King Joash, take the arrows. So he took them and he said to the king, strike the ground. So he struck the ground. One, two, three. Maybe he struck the ground like this. One, two, and three. Okay. But I would probably tell you that Elisha was pretty upset with him for that. And the reason, let me just read it for us. It says here, verse 19, that the man of God was angry with him and said, you should have struck five or six times. Then you would have struck Syria till you had destroyed it, but now you will strike Syria only three times. He only struck three times, but he should have struck at least five or six times. So what was happening here? What was happening here? 
I put it to you that King Joash did not have a faith attitude. There was no passion in his striking. There was no persistence in his striking. King Joash probably did it very passively, without zeal, without passion. And would you like to know why? Because, I put it to you, I think it's because he wasn't sure that the hitting on the ground translated into striking the enemy. He wasn't sure that his hitting the ground, he wasn't sure the hitting on the ground translated into striking the enemy. So Joash obeyed, but he didn't do it with faith. And many times we could do things out of obligation. We could do things without conviction. But faith is what helps us to overcome the enemy. I know, faith without works is dead. But you can have works without faith, and that's also dead. Today, let's have faith with works and may our works of faith be persistence. Let's carry on doing what we need to do. Let's pray um, and keep praying. Let's witness and keep witnessing. Let's serve God and keep serving. I mean, think about Elisha, right? He's about to go. He's about to die. And he's still imparting, still teaching, still discipling, right? So I, I want to encourage you, you know, the fervent effectual prayer of a righteous man avails much. It says in James chapter 5 and verse 16. And this, of course, is referring to the man of God, Elijah, right? Who prays for rain. And he didn't just pray once. He prayed twice. He didn't just pray twice. He prayed three times. And each time, his servant would go out and see if there was any cloud and you know, the servant came back and says, there's no cloud, sir. And he says, okay. He prays again. He buries his head in his knees and begins praying again for rain. Sends his servant out again. Servant comes back and says, no cloud, no rain. What are you talking about, sir? And he keeps praying seven times until the seventh time. The servant said, hey, sir, I think I see the cloud the size of a man's fist. And then Elijah says, yes. He didn't say yes like this, no. He said, grab, ask them to grab the chariots. Come on, let's tell Ahab. You know, we're gonna, he starts to run and it was a miraculous run actually, maybe faster than Hussein Bolt, I don't know, uh, beating Ahab's chariot. But Elijah prayed. He was, you know, it, it says in, in James, he was a man like you and me. He's very human, right? He, he loses his temper with drivers on the streets in Singapore. He gets impatient, but he was still a man of faith. He prays and something happens, right? And so, I want to put it to you that real faith persists. I want to encourage you to continue praying, continue witnessing, continue serving because just because you don't see what is happening in the natural. Doesn't mean that nothing is happening. I put it to you today that through your faith that persists, you will subdue kingdoms, you will work righteousness, and you will obtain your promises. Don't give up on your faith. And principle number three is a faith partnership. It was one arrow, Jesus, that perfect sacrifice for you and I, sufficient for our total victory, paving the way for our victory. But there were a few arrows that were still needed to be striking the ground, right? Few arrows striking the ground, necessary to effect the victory that was won positionally for us right? You see, when we work, we work. 
but when we pray, God works. And if your Bible's like mine, it would say, where two or three are gathered in my name, Jesus is in our midst. If two or three would agree as touching anything on earth, it will be done in heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. That, you, know, that, you know what that is? That is the, the partnership of prayer. Partnership of prayer. But then there is also the partnership of discipleship. Partnership of discipleship. You see, when, when Elisha holds up that bow, sorry, it was King Joash who holds up that bow, Elisha put his hands on King Joash's hands. That means there was a leading, there was a guiding, there was a direction. And I put it to you, that speaks of a discipleship that's taking place. Because as Elisha was about to go, he continues to disciple King Joash, teach him, counsel him, scold him, encourage him, guide him, right? And this is really what partnership is all about. The context is about discipleship. And let me put it to you. Elisha was a good disciple maker because he was an equally good follower. Joash used the same words as Elisha. My father, my father. But unlike Elisha, he wasn't a very good listener. He didn't have that same faith attitude. He didn't hunger like Elisha hungered after Elijah. I mean, when Elijah was about to leave, Elisha followed after Elijah like a puppy dog. Followed him from, from uh, Gilgal to, to Bethel, to Jericho, to the Jordan. And Elijah said, well, what do you want? Why are you following me like a puppy dog? And he said, I want a double portion that you have. And Elijah said, you ask the difficult thing, but if you should see me taken up by the chariots, you will have what you ask. I wondered often at that passage, if when Elijah went to the bathroom, did Elisha follow him to the bathroom? So close. He, you know, because more is caught than taught. So Elijah was about to leave, Elisha followed him like a puppy dog and he did see Elijah taken up. And I put it to you today that Elisha was a good disciple maker because he was a good follower. And today, you know, it tells us that we should have a faith partnership too because none of us are perfect. We should be willing to be corrected, guided, encouraged, right? And we should be willing to teach and impart to others as well. This is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Our faith positioned in Jesus, our faith persistence in all that we do for the Lord, and our faith partnership in prayer and discipling. The Apostle Paul towards the end of his life, was about to be brought to be hung. And during that time, the Roman emperor was Emperor Nero. He was one of the most cruel emperors who set up his statue in every part of the city. And the statue of Emperor Nero, below that at the foot, was these words inscripted 
conqueror. Because that's the way Nero saw himself. And as the Apostle Paul was about to be brought to be hung, the, the Roman guard said to the Apostle Paul, look at all these statues. I could set you free if you would only bow down before one of these statues of Nero, Emperor Nero. The Apostle Paul looked at the statue. He looked at himself. He looked up to heaven. Then he looked to the God and he said, more than a conqueror, let's proceed. No fear of death. No fear of death. He was more than a conqueror. And today, you can be more than a conqueror through Jesus who loves you. Shall we pray? Thank you, Lord. As your head is bowed and as your eyes are closed, I want to pray for you. I want to lead you in some prayers to commit to have a faith position in God, to have some faith persistence and to develop some faith partnerships that will enable you to have victory over every area of your life. You're here today and you do not know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. I'd love to lead you in this simple prayer to receive Jesus into your heart. The Bible says, as many as receive Him, He gave them the right to become children of God, even to those who would believe in His name. Or you could be here today and maybe you've been to church, but your heart has grown cold. But as you heard this message today, Strangely enough, your heart is becoming warm. It's the Holy Spirit drawing you back to Himself. I want you to pray together with us. Or maybe you're here today and you haven't come to that place in your spiritual journey where you know for sure that if you were to die today, you'd go to heaven and you're saying, Pastor Paul, please help me. That's me. If you fall into any one of these three categories, I'd like to lead you in a simple prayer right now. And if you, as you pray after me, I want you to mean it with all your heart. Because as you do so, Jesus will come into your life and you will become more than a conqueror. If that's you, you know, just quickly type yes on the chat. Yes, that's me. I, I, I am in group one. Yes, that's me. I, I, my heart is becoming warm. Yes, I, 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 I need to be sure. Don't hesitate. Join me right now as we pray together. Join me right now. Let's go. Heavenly Father, thank you for speaking to me. I am sorry. I am a sinner. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for my sin. You rose again on the third day. And right now, you are seated with God. And today, I, I believe in you. I put my trust in you. I make you the Lord and Savior of my life. Thank you for hearing my prayer. I am yours and you are mine. And if you said that prayer and you meant it with your heart, today you are born again. And everyone that is born again overcomes the world. It's our trust in Jesus. I congratulate you on the decision you made 
today you are a believer and you're hearing this message, I want you to pray together with me as we make our commitment to continue this journey of faith in Jesus. As we continue praying in persistence, as we continue to do what's right, why don't you pray your own prayer right now wherever you're at? That's right, wherever you're at, in your living room, in your bedrooms, in the car, wherever you're at, just begin to make that place an altar before the Lord. That's right. And pray your own prayer. If you can pray in the Spirit, do so right now. He hears your prayer. He hears your cry. He hears you right now. That's right. Shitaranda bakasandai. Hitaraba sotaraba bababayandai. Yes, pray about everything, your marriage, your family, your children, your sickness, your concerns. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. Uh, hallelujah. Make a commitment right now to keep praying. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, make a commitment right now to keep doing works of righteousness. You may be praying for your families to get saved, your spouse to get saved, your children to come back to the Lord. Whatever it is, keep praying. Keep praying. That's right. Shikarabaka Sunday. Father, right now, Lord, you hear these prayers that are made by your people, your children. Answer them, assure them, encourage them right now. In the name of Jesus, I come against every lie of the enemy. I come against every discouragement right now. And Father, right now, for everyone that hears this prayer within the sound of my voice, uh, that you will strengthen them with might through your spirit in the inner man. And I say to you today, the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you and lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace this moment and in the days to come. May you be victorious in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.